Changing. Do note that for all reefer units operated by MSC, system pressures can only be viewed by connecting a manifold gauge set to the compressor. When the system is in normal operation, the service valves are back seated. Mid seated valve positions allow the technician to monitor system pressures. Front seated position isolates the compressor from the system. The manifold gauge set consists of a low side gauge, a high side gauge and four hoses. The low side blue gauge reads pressure or vacuum and the high red side gauge reads pressure only. There is a red hose for the high side, a blue hose for the low side, a yellow hose for connection to a refrigerant cylinder for charging refrigerant to the system and the second yellow hose, a larger size, for connecting to a vacuum pump when evacuating. Very important. Before a manifold gauge set is connected to the unit, the hoses and the manifold must be purged of air. See vacuum pump section. To properly remove a manifold gauge set, first backseat the compressor discharge service valve, then open both valves on the manifold. In this way, with the compressor running, the refrigerant inside the manifold will be aspirated into the compressor. Backseat the compressor suction service valve and disconnect the manifold hoses from the unit. The vacuum pump. Moisture is the deadly enemy of the refrigeration system. The presence of moisture in a refrigeration system can have many undesirable effects, the most common of which is the formation of acids, resulting in metal corrosion. For this reason, it's very important that a refrigeration system is properly evacuated and dehydrated before filling the refrigerant. The essential tools are a vacuum pump and a gauge manifold set. Evacuation procedure. Only when the system is empty can you connect the vacuum pump to start to evacuate it. We recommend that you always replace the filter dryer. Connect the large yellow hose to the vacuum pump. Connect the red hose between the high side valve and the discharge side of the system. Connect the blue hose between the low side valve and the suction side of the system. Connect the smaller yellow hose to the refrigerant tank. Open the hand valves on the manifold. Start the vacuum pump. Evacuate the system until a deep vacuum is reached as can be read on the manifold. Switch off the pump. Close all the hand valves on the manifold and see if the vacuum holds. Wait to check if there is residual moisture or leaks. If the vacuum holds, the pump can be disconnected and the system is now ready to be filled with a new charge. The thermostatic expansion valve. This valve prevents liquid refrigerant entering the compressor and controls the amount of refrigerant entering the evaporator coil. The thermostatic expansion valve is not adjustable and when defective has to be replaced. All connections on the hermetic valve are bimetallic, copper on the inside and stainless steel on the outside. All joints on this valve are brazed. To replace the TXV valve, you first have to pump down the unit as follows. Connect the manifold to the compressor's valve and read the pressures. Switch on the unit and place the king valve completely front seated. When gauge indicates vacuum, switch off the unit and place the discharge valve completely front seated. Open both hand valves on the manifold. Now you can replace the TXV valve. Unbraze the valve's connections. Remove the valve and, in an emergency, simply cut the capillary tube. When fitting the new valve bulb, place it as far as you can reach, but it's very important to fasten it securely to isolate it. When replacing the TXV valve, always replace the filter dryer. Once the TXV valve and filter are replaced, you have to vacuum the system as follows. Connect the big yellow hose to the pump. Open hand valve on the manifold and start vacuum pump. 
When the system is under vacuum, switch the pump off and close all the hand valves on the manifold. Open the discharge valve of the compressor and place the king valve in the back seated position. Switch the unit on and check if the pressures are alright. To remove the gauge manifold set, see the Checking Compressor Pressures section. Electronic Part Low The electronic part low automatically records the return or the supply air temperature depending on the set point. The recorder reads and records data from the controller. It can be compared to a printer. The recorder will stop when the power is switched off. It's possible to calibrate the electronic part low by pressing the calibration button on the bottom of the recorder. The pen will drive completely downscale and then move back to zero degrees and stop. If the pen is exactly on zero degrees, the recorder is in calibration. Press the calibration button once again and the pen will return to the correct temperature readings. If during calibration the pen is not marking zero, you'll have to adjust it manually by loosening both screws of the pen and placing it on the zero. Refasten screws and the adjustment is complete. When replacing the chart with a new one, always keep the original inside the electrical box as it's often required at the discharge port. Reefer containers fitted with an RMM, a remote monitoring module. In the near future, all the reefer containers operated by MSC, Microlink 2, 2i and 3 types, will have a power cable modem known as RMM, Remote Monitoring Module, installed. The RMM modems are used for remote monitoring of reefer containers using power lines. The RMM allows the controllers of the containers to transmit their data and to receive information to and from the vessel monitoring system. All reefer containers connected and mounted with RMM will, through master modems, communicate and transmit information to the main PC installed normally on the bridge of the vessels. Through this PC, the vessel monitoring system can constantly monitor the reefer containers and will also, in case of a malfunction, indicate an alarm. Amongst the options available on the PC station are the change of the set point and the change of the container ID. Very important, do not exchange modems between different reefer containers. USDA cold treatment. USDA cold treatment is used to kill fruit flies by carrying the fruit at a sustained temperature. The cargo temperature will need more accurate monitoring and for this reason containers are equipped with three extra sensors which are fitted while filling the container with its cargo. The preparation of these reefers, specifically the machinery, calibration of the extra probes, filling the container with its cargo, is carried out by USDA authorized personnel. Once the container is filled and sealed, a set of documents containing certificates and instructions are delivered to the master. Among the documents are the procedures to be followed on board for the daily temperature reporting, for reporting malfunctions and the instructions for eventual change of set point. Everything happening with these reefer containers including sensor readings is recorded and can be viewed at the end of the voyage to check whether procedures have been followed correctly and if the cold treatment has been successful. Before the vessel sails, the master and chief engineer will be shown how to retrieve temperature readings from the supply return and USDA 123 probes. Readings have to be sent twice a day or more if so requested. Readings are obtained as follows. Supply and return by pressing the supply return key on the keypad. Values are shown in the right window of the display. The USDA probes readings are obtained as follows. Press the Alt mode key and select DC. The required codes are for probe 1 select DC3, 
For probe 2, select DC4. For probe 3, select DC5. And for probe 4, not always required, select DC14. Temperatures always have to be reported in Celsius. Reefer units running in dehumidification mode. Dehumidification mode is used to reduce the level of humidity inside the containers. On MSC operated reefer containers, humidity can be reduced down to 65%. When requested by the shipper, before the reefer container is loaded on board, the desired humidity percentage can be settled and controller activated to operate in dehumidification mode by a reefer technician. Please note that when dehumidification mode is activated, the supply lead will flash continuously. To activate the dehumidification mode, code 33 has to be selected and only then the humidity percentage can be set.